Hi, this is Maria. Uh, I'm CEO, co-founder of Papiago Rescue House. If you know me, you know that it takes a lot to get me on camera or in pictures. And it isn't a vanity thing, trust me on that. But um, the reason why I'm, I'm coming to you today is because um, we have a bird that's being sur surrendered. Um, he's a Moluccan and he's a pretty cool bird. Um, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Actually, um, Morgan has, was with us a short time from another rescue and someone came to see him, a family came to see him six, seven months before we would let him go. And everybody says, um, everybody's got advice uh, for how to do rescues, to adopt them out. It's not really a rescue, it's adopting out. And uh, we used to give people the option to um, go through training. Now it's mandatory uh, because People really don't know what they don't know uh, until they're confronted with it, and some some people hand, just they just handle it differently, um, and it's not intuitive. You may think it is, but it's not intuitive how to get a bird to do what you want them to do without sacrificing his spirit, um, or having to learn to work with their native responses. Um, and of course, Laura Joseph or Pamela Clark or Sally Blanchard or any of those uh, people who train birds, work with birds for a living um, and as their passion um, will tell you uh, that you have to have a lot of tools in your toolbox when you're working with animals that um, don't don't conform to the usual cat dog gerbil role in your life, in your family's life, in your home life. But anyway, I I uh, didn't mean to go on. What I want to do is actually do this mini documentary if you will because I think it's important for I, I haven't seen it I'm sure it's been done uh, but I haven't seen it and people really want real information um, it's not polished it's not professional it's not practiced it's not run through legal attorneys um, I'm sure that um, my media team would be kind of closing their eyes and looking away going oh my god but I'm, I'm here I'm real so don't come at me bro um, because I think it's important for me to show you what we do when we have to bring in another uh, bird that's being is being rehomed or uh, surrendered back to us it or surrendered period um, the two, the two are a little different, um, but I think it's important for you to see it. I also think it's important for you to know why, so that we learn from um, anything we can. We can, we can always learn from every situation, and so we we're going to have to to learn. Where I'm going to take you on the journey of figuring this stuff out and it's probably going to be a longer one than you're accustomed to because uh, we're working with something we can't see uh, that I haven't personally experienced uh, with Morgan so I'm going to take you through uh, several different layers of, of doing bird stuff with this one particular bird so that you can ask questions, 
that you can chime in. Um, and please don't tell me to set the bird free um, because that ain't happening. And if you need me to explain why, you should probably go and talk to somebody who has a bird right now. Um, I want to be friendly. I want to keep this friendly. Um, not that I expect you guys not to be, uh, but uh, cat people are the strangest, weirdest people I know. And then there's bird people uh, because they're fiercely protective. And I can't say shit about that because I am too. So without further ado, let me just take you into what we do. So he just arrived about half an hour ago and we have his cage because of course we make sure uh, or we try to, re to to have their cage come with them. Except most of the time we can't because their cages are too small or in bad repair or have rust. We cannot have that. We just cannot. You just, if you're hurting for money, you shouldn't be getting a, a bird right now. You wait until you're not so uh, caught up with the money. So I'm going to flip it around and we've got his cage outside and I'm going to walk you through this. So this is, this is the physical layer. This is what happens. And then I'll introduce you to Morgan. And uh, Morgan and I have a journey together that you guys are going to be with us on. Because I think, well, I think you'll see why. So let me switch you around. So this is a cage. And uh, what we do is we, every cage that comes in, we inspect it to see if there's any issues, spray painting, rust, whatever. So we've done that. And then we take my Vercon. Even though he's been here before, uh, they had a bird there, a little collectus. Uh, she came from a breeder. Um, I believe, as I asked them before, when I, because they didn't even mention her, uh, but briefly, um, that uh, we want to make sure that uh, we're we're lessening the amount of new germs coming into the rescue so we've um, I've sprayed it down and I'm going to um, and I've let it sit it's, of course it needs a little bit of a wash although it looks like they were make, trying to make sure that um, they washed it up pretty good and their purchase are too low the feeding bowls are kind of low that's why um, so we really need to get him a new taller cage because even though this looks like it's a 40, it's definitely not big enough for a Moluccan. So we're going to let this sit and we're going to go meet Morgan. Hi Morgan. Hi buddy. Okay, so everybody, I want you to meet Morgan. Hi, Morgan. Oh. Hi, baby. You know you're not a Nande, right? Okay. So, this is Morgan. Um, and he's in good health. Um, uh, but we do need to get him rechecked. He's been nano chipped. He's been. Uh, on a, a pellet diet and fresh food diet. However, I don't really see a whole lot of evidence of that in the bottom of his cage or on his feet. Uh, so he may have gotten out of the house of eating fresh food because he does have his pellet. Anyway, so here is what, um, why Morgan's being brought back. Even though he was visited for about seven months, twice a week, um, uh, they have an older daughter, uh, and the older daughter uh, came to visit uh, after shortly after Morgan got there, and um, he flew at her. Now, of course, this is repeated to me, so I don't know if he flew to her and she how she responded, 
it's I'm not saying it's automatically her fault that's not what I'm saying I'm just trying to get give you an idea that I don't know how it was did she put her arm up to protect her face which is is typical um, that's not wrong um, and um, and he bit her I believe he bit her in the face though because um, that seems to really resonate uh, more so than being bitten on the hand um, I shouldn't say see, it is a different being bitten in the face. Uh, I personally have not experienced that with Morgan. Um, and the mom, uh, the one that he was very attached to, um, I believe, um, she never had any issues with him either, biting her. Uh, the husband did have, uh, I believe, a bite. Um, so what my what my immediate diagnosis is is that he had a mate companion bond with her, and he was being protective. Uh, and now the daughter has a, a baby of her uh, of her own, and so the grandbaby's coming over, and um, the daughter, of course, is fearful for the baby's uh, safety. So. What we need to do is work with Morgan to find or to try to get him to see this behavior uh, to, so that we can help them and help the future family of Morgan uh, be able to manage his um, need for companionship without creating a bond, a mate bond, uh, which is pretty, pretty difficult. Uh, because I accidentally uh, did that with uh, one of our one of our uh, cockatoos, um, and it's it has something to to do with the way you hold them, the way um, the way you pet them. Uh, lower petting is definitely uh, verboten uh, for for um, I would say horny birds, but they don't have to be horny. Um, because the message is still being sent and um uh and they're you know they're, of course that you know their dna is telling them to procreate even if it's with human beings um so this is a really calm guy who's very he's always been very relaxed easygoing quiet uh very soft um so he's like a really a really sweet bird but uh as we know from the rescue, um, the amount of cockatoos we have, we cannot always uh, count on either one uh, people's experience with birds or cockatoos in particular to be wanting to come and adopt them or to, that they, because they have experience, that they're having the right experience not to encourage that behavior. Uh, inadvertently in their cockatoos. Now we're, you know, um, I personally find the cockatoos very different from working with the macaws. So it's night and day. So this is kind of geared toward cockatoos right now, uh, especially the larger ones. Um, but our processes are the same for every bird, whether they're teeny tiny to that they're you know, large like Morgan. Um, hi, baby. You're too cute. Yes, you are. You're so cute. Yes, you are. Um, so we, uh, so the cage is going to sit with the burk on for about 15 minutes, and then we're going to clean it, and then we're going to stage it or dress it up, and then we're going to, um, we're going to put him in there and then we're going to uh, add him to the cockatoo room. So um, I will come back to you more on that in a bit.